Hello, my name is Mike Lehman. I run product management for the Cloud Application Foundation, WebLogic Server, Coherence, Java EE. I'm joined here today by Niazi from Turkcell. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, WebLogic Server and uh, how it's deployed at the Turkcell environment. Um, Niazi, maybe you could introduce yourself and tell us a bit about Turkcell so that we uh, know what, what the business is and, and what you do at Turkcell. Hello, I am Niazi. I'm working for Turkcell as an uh, administration, uh, application server administration and web server administration. Turkcell is the one uh, only, uh, only and single uh, Turkish company who uh, codes to the New York uh, Stock Exchange. Okay. Um, I'm working uh, in a group uh, called uh, admin application server administration and my group uh, does the weblogic installations I mean weblogic server and weblogic suite um, such as uh, co coherence oh, okay. uh, and uh, web server installations fine tunings uh, determining the standards uh, get, ma making some POCs uh, and like that uh, we are deploying WebLogic server almost everywhere in okay. in every application. Actually, we have uh, like 300 uh, applications running on uh, WebLogic servers, and some of them run as a backend service. I mean, just load balancers uh, and application servers okay. and some backends. Yep. Yep. Um, and we have a very good uh, monitoring uh, capabilities for tracking uh, SLAs, KPIs, uh, and uh, we have defined uh, alarms for uh, taking proactive actions. Okay. So Niazi, you were telling me uh, a bit about your uh, deployment at Turkcell. Uh, maybe you could describe what the sort of size of deployment, how many applications you have, and give us a sense of your deployment of WebLogic Server. Actually, we have uh, 550, approximately, uh, machines that's running WebLogic Server, and we have uh, 400, and 400 uh, domains. And these domains uh, hosted uh, 1,600 uh, 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 instances. Uh, and we have many kind of applications, actually. Uh, some of them uh, are running, and m most of them actually running uh, for tired web application. I mean, load balancer, web server, application servers, and databases. And the uh, rest of them running uh, as a backend service, such as load balancer, application server, and database. Can you describe um, sort of why WebLogic Server was chosen in your environment? What was sort of, you know, what happened and n now that you've got such a large deployment, um, has it worked out for you? Did it meet your expectations and so forth? Yeah, performance uh, is very important for us and uh, we have the best performance uh, with, with WebLogic actually. Okay. Uh, and the second one is scalability and uh, ease of use. Uh, the operational cost and operational ease of, uh, ease of use is very important for us because uh, managing th that kind of uh, instances is, should be very easy or easy for mm -hmm. us. Uh, and that's why we, we, ch we have chosen uh, WebLogic. And so when you 1,600 instances, 400 domains, is that right? Yeah, a 400 domains. So that's, that's a it's a large environment, yeah. and so I assume you must do a lot of automation as well of that. So a lot of scripting uh, with and so uh, forth. We have lots of uh, WLST scripts. Okay. Uh, that checking the system, we call it autopilot. Okay. Uh, and our WLST scripts uh, check the environment and see something goes wrong, mm -hmm. and maybe they fix them. And also we have uh, separate products uh, for uh, defining uh, alarms and getting some auto actions or just sending emails, uh, SMSs. Maybe tell us a little bit about the, the architecture. You mentioned that uh, 
these tend to be multi-tier applications, you know, load balancer, web tier, uh, application tier, sometimes just a business logic tier. Um, are they mostly uh, web style applications or messaging applications or SOA based applications? Um, are you running other infrastructure on top of WebLogic Server, for example? Actually, the answer is all, all of, of the above. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, 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 w most of uh, <coughs> our application is web based applications. Okay. We are offloading the SSL uh, <coughs> on the load balancing layer. Mm -hmm. And also, we use load balancers for load balancing and compression. Okay. Uh, then we use web servers. Web s we are using web servers for load balancing the uh, uh, requests, and uh, we are using WebLogic plugin for doing yep. that. Yep. And for the security reasons, uh, for making another another layer for uh, in the DMZ area. So. Uh, Half of uh, our application set is running an on this style, but we have an such a big applications uh, in telco side, for example, just having SMS messages or right, right. Uh, and mer merging them and send backend. For example, we we are t uh, not nowadays busy with uh, implementing coherence in that la layers okay. uh, for getting uh, more, uh, very powerful and uninterrupted performance uh, and for example these backend uh, side applications run, running just WebLogic server and database most of yep. the time yep. and we have we have uh, very large deployment of uh, SOA actually. oh the yeah. people process manager yeah 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 uh, we are using uh, so SOA and as I said, we are using coherence nowadays. We are very uh, fresh news. <laughs> and can you maybe tell? Uh, I, I I'm not sure you can share this, but uh, the kind of workloads that you're running, like in terms of SMS messages running through this environment. Seventy million messages uh, in one day. Wow. Uh, okay. Passes. Uh, over so this is a serious back-end yeah, infrastructure yeah, yeah. running through. Yeah, wow. and this is the part of the traffic, not 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 yeah. the whole of them. Yeah, right, right. As I think you know, we've been doing a lot of work integrating coherence into WebLogic Server, um, and it's also integrated into our SOA suite as well for caching services. What what's the kinds of use cases that you are trying to work with with WebLogic uh, and coherence? Uh, Actually, there is two re reasons. The first one is for level two caching, because okay. we we have a slow and uh, slow backends, uh, and for some reason w we cannot uh, speed them up. So uh, we decided to get the data from there, because we we noticed that we just only read from the, there. Mm -hmm. So we we did, we have a decision that. We are going to read the data from there and put the coherence side and read that data from very various very various classical yeah. coherence yeah. use case offloading uh, load from the back end environment. Let's say they're slow or overloaded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the second uh, one, uh, and this is very important for the CRM side, for example, our customers needs uh, their session to be lived longer. Because uh, our session lifetime is 15 minutes, and uh, they okay. they want, for example, n never ending uh, s yeah. sessions. Yeah. So that's why we we have chosen uh, coherence web. Uh, we are offloading the session management to the uh, coherence side, and uh, ma make our customer more happy about their uh, session lifetimes, and plus. Uh, we, we have a deployment uh, and we have a very frequent deployer actually we have uh, ch changing our uh, applications very frequently oh, so okay. uh, while we we are deploying our, our applications our customers uh, now interrupted uh, they, they are yep. send, sending to the login pages if we offloading the session to the 
uh, coherent uh -huh, side. Okay. We we will make them still uh, working on the r running servers. Right. Okay. Because we are doing our deployments uh, in the pieces, so yep. uh, they can run on the. Again, a very it's a common way of using coherence is put the session in a separate tier so your front tier is completely stateless and you can do kind of a rolling upgrade without impacting the, the user yeah. session. Yeah. And the third uh, usage of uh, coherence in our side that uh, we, have we have multiple servers, application servers, and there is no ser uh, server affinity on the, on the client side. Mm -hmm. So client uh, can be come on the first server, then the third server, and the request uh, m m must be handled uh, u uniquely. And uh, I, I mean, uh, we, we have to understand that ah, this is this user has al already logged in. So, right. so we are using co coherence for unify them uh, oh, if. If they can uh, come uh, on the first server or third server, it doesn't matter. Okay, for, so it's for sort us. of like shared state across yeah. many different yeah. app servers. Yeah. Well, yeah again, Instead of putting them uh, yeah. in the database, yeah. Because there are earlier times we, we we have doing like that, put, put, put this state. You on pay the, a heavy the, price to put yeah. it in a database and performance yeah. against the database. Yeah. So it's interesting. You've you've hit on the most common use cases I see uh, coherence yeah. being used for. I mean, as you go forward, it sounds like um, web logic and coherence are an investment area. Obviously, as you said, you have a large investment of um, SOA on top of web logic server. Are there other areas that you're uh, planning to take web logic server? Are you looking at cloud? Are you looking at, um, you know, uh, platform as a service? Are there any other sort of areas that um, you imagine taking WebLogic uh, into as you, as you move forward? Yeah, we have uh, actually two areas in uh, this year. We are t planning to use Enterprise Manager 12C uh, for several re reasons. Actually, the first one is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, my group is responsible for consolidating the uh, WebLogic environment uh, for m uh, m making the environment uh, always refresh. So that's why we we are we are planning to use the consolidation planner uh, function of uh, Enterprise Manager. And the second one is uh, we want to discover our environment and what's happening there as a configuration management. Uh, and Enterprise Manager 12C has a this feature also, and. Uh, we want to build a golden copy of the conf configuration and uh, control the environment. Uh, also, we have, uh, as I mentioned, we are tr planning to uh, deploy uh, co coherence in, in our environment. And uh, there is no way uh, in, in that day for uh, managing and monitoring these uh, co coherence clusters. So that's why we, we are we need to monitor them and we are going to use Enterprise Manager 12C for monitoring coherence clusters. Uh, and then uh, we are uh, dealing with uh, cloud sources okay. actually. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I don't know exact uh, information about cloud but Turkcell has a, a cloud service and I, I think we are going to u use such a uh, pr product as yours. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, so the Enterprise Manager 12C, you're right, is um, the use case that you described, configuration management, provisioning, diagnostics. Uh, it was a big release for us, 12C, particularly the integration with WebLogic server. So that's, uh, we're seeing a lot of customer uptake on. So yeah. it's good to see you trying it out, particularly customers have a lot of domains um, because then they have that visibility and ability to make things consistent between them and then uh, cloud it sounds like you're in the the early stages of it and yeah. uh, hopefully we can carry on and show you what we're doing in web logic in that space so as you know today you and I were talking about uh, the public cloud and the yeah. Java cloud service and then obviously there's Exologic as well
So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll stop there. I thank you very much, Niazi, for uh, taking the time to tell us about TurkCell and, and your deployment of WebLogic. It sounds great. Uh, really excited to have you as a, as a good customer of ours. And uh, we look forward to hearing about maybe in a few months from now or a bit later on, we can do another interview and uh, see where you're at with Enterprise Manager 12C and, and the coherence implementation that you're working with uh, WebLogic. Yeah, good. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.